Welcome back to the QEdit tutorial, part six. Today we are going to talk about setting a condition for quest success and quest failure. We're also going to teach you how to write a description, title, and short information on your quest, as well as setting up a quest board icon. So to start, we're going to go in the script, and we're going to use the, the opcode set quest failure. Normally, uh, most people use function 253 for this, and we'll go do that later. And there's also set quest success. And generally speaking, everyone uses 255 for this, just for consistency's sake. And we're going to go right into this right away. So we'll kind of set this at the end for now because our script's pretty short. Right away, we want a switch call. And we want to use the difficulty register. There's going to be four switches on this one. So do 256, 257, 258, and 259. And this is going to be function 255. Next we have, please add Meseta. Two. This one just uses a, a straight up value for how much Meseta you want to give the player. So this value you want to put in hex. So I have the calculator right here. So let's say you want to give the player 10,000 Meseta, or let's just say 1,000 Meseta for normal mode. That would be 3E8. So we just copy that in here. Oh, forgot to. And we're just going to leave this um, bare bones for now. Normally, um, you add a message in here as well. So it would be it would look something like uh, this. Received 1,000 Meseta. And then you'd have your add Meseta code right after it. And I believe you'd use, well, we're going to come back to that later. So then we have 257 for hard mode. Window message. Let's go bump it up to 3,000 Meseta. Received 3,000 Meseta. And then we need to add the Meseta again. Three thousand BB eight. And I can just do this simple simplify. Here again, five thousand and then we have our ultimate check. We've got to get our number for this one. Okay, so basically this is a simple way of setting a quest success and giving the player their Meseta. Now this is not quite complete, but this is a good starting place. We'll come back to this in a little bit. 
So next, in the set quest failure, you can use that for something different, like if the player runs out of time, or if they perform like a specific action, or they die, or there's a lot you can do with that, but for now we're just going to kind of leave it alone. Next we're going to look at how to set a title, information, and description for your quest. So if you hit, go to, up to properties here and hit title, you can type a title for your quest. There is a size limit. If you hit it, it just won't let you type anymore. So we're going to name this just as a tutorial quest. Description for information. Now this is the information that pops up when you scroll over the quest in the quest list online. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to actually select the quest. That's that other description. So we're just going to leave this short because there's not much space on this window. Um, so we're going to put learn the basics of PSO. And we're just going to leave it at that. Uh, you don't want to go too long here because it will uh, word wrap before or line wrap before you get to this part of the um, window. So just keep that in mind. You kind of want to be a little bit conservative with the amount of uh, text you put on a line. In description, you can be a little less conservative with this one because it's a bit longer. I'd say you can probably go to about maybe here before you have to do a uh, a line break. In this quest, you will learn how to do the following. Mag data. Um, challenge mode. Battle mode. And these will change later, but I just wanted to put a little bit of a placeholder in here for now. Uh, mags. Combat. And we'll put one more. We'll put um, teamwork. Now just hit OK, and those will save all those. Pretty basic. Nothing uh, earth shattering here. So next, we're going to have Phoenix Mog talk about Q exit, the opcode Q exit. A few Sega quests and some player made quests use an opcode called Q exit that basically is just a way to immediately go back to the lobby. It's usually set at label function 5000, and it's by itself. So if there's ever a situation where you just want the player to just leave the quest, you can just call function 5000 and you're good to go. For our purposes, we're going to tie this to a quest board item. Uh, we're going to give the player the option to use it or not. Uh, for these, I'm going to use functions 30. To do that, we're going to set it in function 0 after the floor handlers. To begin setting a quest board, you need to use set quest board handler. The first one is the slot number that's going to be used. So we're going to use slot 0 for the first one. Function is the one that calls the that calls what the quest board will pull. We're gonna make this 31 and for the string we're just gonna call this quest exit. From here we also need to uh, use the reserved register for the quest board. The first one for slot zero is R74. That's what we're going to set. If you do not set the register, then the item will not show up. For function 31, we're going to do a display message quest board. This is gonna be 
the window that pops up specifically for the quest board that will have the text. Uh, there will be some formatting that's going to be used for this, since this is very likely to word wrap. The window is quite small. We're going to say, do you want to teleport back to the lobby? And we're going to make a line break right after the word teleport. The format for it is a less than CR greater than sign. This creates a new line. From here, we're going to make a list that will determine whether the player hits yes or no. And for this, we're just going to use register 70. And for something like this, you always want to put no first, because if you, if the player, for example, hits A really fast and yes is the first option, they're just going to exit the quest immediately. For that reason, you just want no as your first choice. And you, the second uh, jump by register 71, 5000, just basically says that if a player hits yes, they're going to hit Q exit. And he's adding some rets for flesh me. Out. Yep. Flesh out all the rets from earlier. Um, we're going to put a ret right here. You're also going to want a, uh, a Q exit after each of those, no? No, because the quest, um, the quest after it succeeds will already be done. You're right, you're right. Now, the conditions for the completion is what is going to be a consideration. So say we want to actually have the condition to complete the quest register. If you remember from Temple in area 50, in room 50, we have this wave of Hildebears that's wave 3. So what if we wanted to have the quest condition be after the Hildebears are killed? What we'll do here is we'll set up another function so we're going to set up the success condition bouncing off of function 5. If you have forgotten, function 5 is the floor handler for temple. As we can see here, after the door is unlocked, it returns uh, control to the player. What we can do here is after the player returns control, we will have it jump to function 7. and we will set register 4. So this basically, after this first door is unlocked, it will now jump to a second function that is the next layer to work with. To make sure that this register 4 also gets set, we will, in function 5, set a jump I before it has an opportunity to jump to 6 to also jump to function 7. So if function 6 gets called, function 5 will then have the opportunity to send you as well if you happen to teleport back to Pioneer 2 and come back. Function 7 is going to be a if zone clear. If zone clear has similar formatting to if switch pressed, although it's a little different, it sets the first register to be the uh, confirmation that the area is clear, with the second register being the subsequent ones to determine if the requirements are met. So we're going to set if zone clear, R10 and R11. This makes R11 the sequent registers that determines whether 10 will get checked or not. For register 11, we're going to set it to floor number 1 for Temple Alpha, and we're going to set the next register 12 to room 50, which is the room with these Hildebears. From here, we will do a jump by. If register 10 is 1, we will then jump to function 8. After this, we will put a jump going back to function 7 so that it has its loop. And just in case anything happens, we'll end this with a ret. So it will continuously run this until register 10 gets set, which is after the Hildebears will be defeated. When register 10 gets set and it jumps to function 8, 
function 8 will be a set R255. Register 255 is the reserved register to confirm that the quest is clear. This is what's going to end up calling quest, set quest success to work. Set quest success requires register 255 to be one to function properly. After this, we will add a window message saying you have defeated all the enemies. Your reward is at the guild counter. And we will also call function 2, call function 3, and end this with ret. Now the quest has a way to complete itself and allow you to get your reward. And we will set a win end. And we will also make the quest fail function 253. Uh, we're not going to have anything happen if you fail the quest, so it's just going to immediately boot you back out. So we'll just make this a ret. And if you remember, uh, register 253 would trigger the quest failure function. We do not have 253 in the script right now, so you cannot fail, but we're just putting this in for posterity. Now, if we wanted to confirm that the quest has all loose ends tied up, we can go to the tools and we can hit compatibility check. This gives us a way to determine for each version that you may be working on if the quest is going to have any problems. As we can see for GameCube and Xbox, which is what we're designing this one for, we should have no problems. If you happen to have something wrong, like say 253 is not here, it'll give you a warning sign and telling you what you're missing. We'll just set 253 back in. And then from here, Kayak is going to mention some other loose ends that we need to talk about right now. So one thing that I noticed was that we forgot to actually add the uh, close quest board message. So, our close message quest board. So we want to add this specifically right after the list so that when you choose an option, it closes the quest board message regardless of which answer you choose, yes or no. And that's it with that. We're going to save this uh, for because what I'm about to do, I don't want to save. So always save your work. Now there's a sh couple shortcuts that you can do in QEdit. I kind of glossed over one in the last part about moving some an object or a monster in the 3D viewer, but there are two other things that you can do that are shortcuts. So let's say you want to place a bunch of the same monster. What you do is you select a monster or an object, you hit the move button, then if you hold the control key, you can copy this monster or object in, in another case if you use an object. And you just click over and over and over and you get as many of whatever you're copying. It's just a really simple way of copying something if you, if you plan on using multiple of them. Just keep in mind that it will copy every single thing, including the map section and the wave number. So just keep that in mind if you're copying a monster. Another thing is looking at the, um, the map designates. So I believe in the first part we manually typed this out. There is a way to get this to automatically appear. So if you go to an unused map, let's just say Spaceship Alpha. If you right click on a map, you can choose the layout. Let's just say we choose map layout three. Now, if you go to your script, you can see that it added Spaceship Alpha map 3, with signified by the O2 here, to our script. The one issue with this right now, I wouldn't recommend doing it in the middle of your um, 
development is that it puts it at the top. So everything that's on the top will get pushed below it, including your set episode and floor handler. So you want to keep that in mind and just take a keep a lookout for that. Doing something in this order in function zero may get undes undesired results such as a crash. So keep that in mind. With that being said, I will also just briefly go over the 3D viewer again. Let's go back to Temple. So just a review. If you hold control and click, you can move a, f a monster freely around. If you hold shift and click, you can move him up and down on the Y axis. If you hold X, Y, or Z and click, you can move him, uh, move the monster object on that rotation. So this is the Y rotation. And you can't really move monsters on the Z or X rotation, so that's not really gonna work here. But with an object, for example, let's just move this uh, targetable object out of the way real quick. And what you could do with the Z, this is the Z, this is the X. So they do similar things. You just want to keep in mind that, you know, whatever you want to rotate, you, just, you might have to fiddle around with this to kind of get used to it. And that's basically all the shortcuts that you can do in QEdit. We didn't learn these till recently, so be lucky that you're learning them right away. <laughs> so that'll pretty much cover this part. Uh, the next part, we're going to talk about a lot of exceptions and a lot more higher end uh, capabilities that will make your experiences very easy in the future. In doing so, it'll make it much less difficult and time consuming for you to complete your quest in a timely fashion. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in part 7.